Hi, this is Doug Joseph with Design 8 Studio with another quick update on our work toward building a CNC controlled plasma cutting rig. As I mentioned, I'm using the Lowrider 3 from V1 Engineering as the CNC motion control system or our base for this project. So when we last left off, we had some magnets that we had purchased from Amazon that I thought were neodymium, but when I saw how weak they were and then went back and looked at the listing, turns out there's nowhere in the listing that said they were neodymium. So that's on me. I should have read the listing closer. So I mentioned in the last video that you can salvage some really nice, powerful magnets out of old PC hard disk drives. And these two really strong magnets are from a, a PC hard disk drive. I went ahead and wired up the end stop switch, which is going to trigger when the floating Z rises. Um, and so uh, took advantage of the pre-planned cord wire management on the back of this piece with the uh, zip tie slots. Okay, so we're ready to put in our heat certs and I'm going to be using I'm going to be using this product which I will put a link to it in the description and it's an assortment and I could have gotten away with using um, M4 really but um, I use M4 a lot so I'm going to go ahead and use M5 on this uh, and I'm using the M5 by eight millimeter by seven millimeter heat certs. And I designed this so the hole is slightly wider at the top to allow the heat cert to kind of rest in the hole, getting prepared for going in. And then just below that, the hole constricts so that it can get a good tight grip on the heat cert. All right, so this is that fun moment when you have to be really careful not to burn yourself. You always wanna check it real good, make sure that it's nice and level. Okay. I'll rock this up so you can see. That's how you want to check to make sure that you got your heat certs nice and level. You don't want your threads getting fouled. And you want to check it both ways, not just not just from this way, but from the other way also. So I'm going to grab the machine torch. I'll be right back for a test fit. I'm back with my machine torch, also known as a straight torch or pencil torch. And it would feed in from the top like this. By the way, this is an IPTM80. It is the pencil torch that is recommended by Hynide, the maker of the Cut 60DN plasma cutter that I purchased. And if I've designed my parts right, um, these 3D printed plastic clamping parts should make contact with the torch before they make contact with each other, allowing me to have just a little bit of uh, leeway to really clamp down tight. And uh, you can tell that I have indeed accomplished that when you see that this piece here can rock just a little bit letting you know that there is that gap on either side. All right, I don't know if you can see it, but there's still just a little gap on either side, uh, but less than was at the beginning because I've flexed that top piece just a little bit to get that good tight seal, that good grip on the plasma torch. 
um, one thing I learned is don't try to guesstimate how much weight, uh, how hefty your plasma torch is. Just go ahead and get it out and have it in your assembly process so you can know for sure. I say that because I started off thinking that these magnets that I got out of an old PC hard drive were too strong and would need to have uh, their strength diluted by putting a layer of plastic, uh, 3D printed plastic between them and the strip of metal. Uh, I went through three iterations of testing that. I started off with uh, these little um, countersunk areas with little tabs of metal that match the shape of the um, magnets. Uh, I started off with those countersunk areas in such a way that the tabs of metal would be on the back side. And uh, this one started off with uh, three and a half millimeters thick worth of plastic. Uh, that weakened the magnets far too much. And then I went with another one of these that had the countersunk areas deeper and the amount of plastic between the metal tabs and the magnets was only one and a half millimeters. I thought that one was going to be strong enough. And so I started putting everything together. That's when I got the uh, machine torch out and tested it in the mix and saw that it still weakened the magnets too much. And at that point, I decided to just go ahead and print up one that was reversed that would have the metal tabs exposed with no layer of plastic in between them and the magnets. And uh, in order to secure these metal tabs in, since they're on the same side of the magnets, um, easier to pull them out of these uh, slots, I not only used epoxy glue on them, but also pre-drilled holes in them, ran M3 screws, uh, pre-drilled and tapped uh, threads, M3 threads into them, ran M3 screws in from the back, and then used a grinder to grind off the tips of the screws. So I'm hoping between the epoxy and the screws that this will hold good. And so I'm ready to go ahead and mount this piece onto the slide bearing, and then I'll run another test to see how well it holds the weight of the mount with the plasma torch in it. All right, well, we definitely have a magnetic attraction strong enough to hold the weight of the mount and the torch. And so that's good news. And there is, there is a breakaway feature in case the torch should hit something. Uh, and honestly, I think I'm at about that sweet spot uh, where it's holding the torch but if the torch hits something, it rather easily breaks away. So I'm uh, thankful to have gotten to that point of balance. So the next question is, does the uh, end stop trigger? And I believe we'll see, yes, the end stop triggers. You can hear it clicking. So my floating Z is working. Uh, working great. I've noticed a lot of people put springs on the, the floating Z to pull back downward. Um, but one video I watched, the guy pointed out that you've got all this weight of gravity pushing down and you really don't need that spring. Um, I think I mentioned already, but in case I didn't, um, the core, the Lowrider 3 core has these two sets of screws that are for uh, mounting the router. And that's what the two 
top screws uh, in this back plate will go into. And there is a third set of screws uh, down lower that is for dust collection ring uh, when using a router. And my, my mount plate uh, has that uh, third set of screws, screw holes down there to use that. Uh, and so I believe that this is going to work and I'll do, I'll do more testing to verify that later, but we seem to be off to a good start. All right, that's about it for now. And again, this is Doug Joseph with Design 8 Studio and I wish you happy making.